when FIFA 22 was first released and I went into the first weekend league, I was not good at the game. There'll probably be people watching this video that was actually watching my live streams back within that first couple of weeks. And when we went through foot champions, I managed to go 2 3 no up and then eventually lose the game to be 5-2 or 5-3. And this didn't just happen once, this happened multiple times. But since then, I've been working on it. I've been looking at different ways in which I can improve. And thankfully, I have. So in this video, I'm going to be going through five different tips that have helped me improve into foot champions. And hopefully you will be able to do the same thing. But before we do get into the video, if you're looking to get some very easy coins to improve your ultimate team and really get that edge over your opponents, then there is no better place than Mule Factory. Head over there to get yourself some cheap and fast FIFA 22 coins, completely reliable. And if you use Fnatic 5 at checkout, you'll also get yourself a 5% discount. Link can be found in the description down below. Getting back into the video, I should start off by saying that I'm not a pro player. And if you do want to go pro, then obviously that will be better players to actually listen to when it comes to getting foot champion tips. I will never be a pro player and I have no desire to ever be a pro player. So the tips that I'll be going through are there for the casuals, those that want to carry on playing FIFA 22 over the weekend, go into the weekend league and get a few more wins than what they normally do. So getting into this, the first tip is to actually select meta players. There's so many people that I can't do in the weekend league as well as there's people that share their teams with me on the live streams and I see that they're using players that no one else is using. I understand for a lot of people there is sentimental value around certain players, whether they play for the current club that they support or whether or not they played for them in the past. This does lead certain people to just buy those players even if they're not good within game. And when I talk about meta players, they don't need to be expensive. They also don't even need to be high rated. With my team, I do have some expensive, high rated, desirable players, but they don't need to be these players exactly. You don't need to go for Messi, Mbappe and Ronaldo, even though they're slightly cheaper than what we would be able to go and get them for within previous FIFAs. But there's other players out there such as Dembele, Benzema, Fakir, who every single time I come up against, they always seem to get goals against me. The ball always seems to be just stuck to these players and I just can't get the ball off them. There's other players such as Kimpembe, Rudiger, Hakimi, Mendy, who are just solid within defence. And then of course there's also goalkeepers such as Chesney, Lloris, Allison, Edison, who every time I seem to come up against and try to shoot inside the box with my high rated desirable players, they always seem to just pluck the ball out of the sky without any issues whatsoever. These players are not expensive, but they are very, very good within game. These are the only players that are good and desirable within game. There's a lot of them. But so many people try to go for other types of players just because they're good in real life when in fact they just don't fit the meta of Ultimate Team. At the beginning of FIFA 22, I went for players such as Harry Kane within my team because he is a 90 rated player and he was costing about 30 to 50k right at the beginning. I thought he was a still to be at that price at the beginning of FIFA 22, so I bought him, used him in my team, and I stuck with him for a long time despite him being an awful player within FIFA. The second I got rid of him and actually started looking at more desirable and better players within game, which did happen to be lower rated because I started to look at Timo Werner, Aubameyang. That is when I managed to score a lot more goals and do a lot better within Ultimate Team and actually start competing within Foot Champions to so make sure that you're doing the same thing. The second tip is that you should also be looking at formations. This is very similar to having meta players within the game. You also want to have a good formation. The formations that I use are 4 1 2 1 2, the 4 3 2 1, the 4 2 3 1, and the 4 triple 2. Now, these aren't the only formations within the game, but normally how I start is I start with a 4 5 1 just to get chemistry. And as soon as that game kicks off, I will immediately go to the 4 3 2 1 or the 4 1 2 1 2. If I manage to go 2 or 3 no up very early on and I know that my opponent is a strong one, I will then settle down to a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-2-2 where I could be slightly more defensive and just be defensively covered whilst still having players on that attack. With formations, it is slightly different to picking players. With players, it seems like a meta player for someone will be a meta player for someone else. They just always seem to be good. With formations, for some people, it can be completely different and it does depend on your custom tactics. 
So for example, I hear a lot that the 3-5-2 formation is very good within the midfield and very strong in the attack. But I know personally that I'm not a strong defender. I'm not that good at defending within games. So for me to go for a 3-5-2, despite it being a popular formation, it will probably hurt me rather than actually help me. Finding a good formation might seem easy, but it actually could be a bit complicated once you actually start to sit down and think about the variables. The variables of your playstyle, what you're strong at, what you're weak at, the types of players that you have within the team that fit the meta, and your custom tactics and how you're going to lay those out. The third tip is actually learning the OP mechanics. I understand it, we all watch football, we all see the lovely play from our favourite teams and we want to replicate that within game. Unfortunately, it's not how it works. FIFA is based off real life football but it can't replicate it exactly. It's still a game at the end of the day and there's still overpowered things that you can do within game which will be better than other game mechanics. For example, skill moves aren't crazy overpowered this year. If you come up to an opponent that knows how to defend, you trying to use roulettes or rainbow flicks or whatever skill moves that you're going through, it just isn't going to cut it. There are some skill moves which do work out well. Maybe we'll have to go through them in a separate video and running through the skill moves that actually are worth performing. But this doesn't just stick to skill moves. There's corner tactics which you can do which are also overpowered. This is where you'll pass it to the player at the edge of the box and you get that player to put that ball at the back post and hopefully there'll be another player there that will easily be able to just tap it in. You then also have over the top through balls which always seem to get behind defensive line and on top of that if you run down the wing and hug that line you can then get to the edge of the box do a driven pass and most of the time it is able to go to the feet of one of your players where you do need to either take a touch or hit it first time for you to get that in the back of the net. It does depend on the situation right at the end, but the driven pass itself, as long as you're in a good position, normally does go through and does manage to get to your player. There's loads of different examples of OP mechanics within the game, and if you learn some of them, they can really help you out. The fourth tip is to use the forfeit tactic if you're really struggling within foot champions. For a lot of this year, I have played on the weekend and I have gone through all 20 games of me trying to play from start to finish. But with how EA have set up foot champions with its matchmaking and you still get some rewarded for losing, you can actually forfeit the first 5 to 10 games and those remaining games that you have depending on how many you forfeit will be considerably easier. If you forfeit five games in a row where you score an own goal and then forfeit the match, you give your opponent the win. But because of how matchmaking works, the next time you play someone, you're likely to play someone who has a similar record to you. And it really doesn't take too long for you to start coming up to other players who also are doing the exact same thing where they're forfeiting matches or they're just not that good in the game. We actually did a fully in-depth video explaining everything. I went through this in two separate weekends and both times it was very successful considering I forfeited a number of games in a row right at the beginning. So if you do want to see that, there will be a link in the description down below. But the final tip that I have is to not play on Sunday and also take regular breaks. For me, taking regular breaks is difficult because I have a limited amount of time for the amount of channels that I go through, not just FIFA, but also there being other gaming channels and other just YouTube channels in general. I try to get all the Foot Champion games done during my live streams on the weekend, but there have been a few weekends, especially with FIFA 22, where I haven't been able to get those games done during the live streams. I've had to finish them off stream, and when I do go through them off stream, I normally play just one or two and then take a five Five to 15 minute break to do other things especially when I get mad with gameplay and then come back feeling refreshed feeling better play again and I perform better this also works out very well when I'm not playing on a Sunday every single time that I stream foot champions and play on Sunday gameplay is slow it's sluggish it's awful and I don't think there's been a single Sunday since the release of FIFA 22 where gameplay has been good I don't know what it is, I don't know what leads to this, but every single time, gameplay just feels slow and sluggish. The best days are Friday or Saturday. So if you can get your games done on those days, it's going to be a lot better for you. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to win every single game just because it's better gameplay, but it's more entertaining. 
Personally, I would much rather lose on good gameplay than win on bad gameplay. There are a lot of times during my Saturday live streams where I come up to an opponent and he's just a thousand times better than me. The pass and play is perfect, the skill moves are perfectly timed, and the amount of goals that go in, which are just absolutely ridiculous, as in ridiculous in a good way, is insane. We end up just laughing about it and having fun with FIFA, whereas Sunday we concede some scrappy goals. There's some ridiculous goals in a bad way this time and it doesn't feel like I lost the game because I was outplayed, it felt like I lost the game because I was cheated out of it because of horrific gameplay. That's when I get mad and annoyed with the game. So overall just playing on a Saturday even if I was to still lose the exact same amount of games it just feels slightly better. But anyway guys these are five different tips which have helped me improve with foot champions within fifa 22. yet again not a pro player so if you do want to go pro there's other players out there which you should be listening to myself i'm just a casual player who wanted to get slightly better at the game where i was probably above the average i think i managed to achieve that goal and i'm having a lot of fun playing through fifa 22. so if you are struggling definitely try out some of these tips and hopefully you'll be a lot better at the game Anyway guys, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see ya.